is the case. So if we look here on the left-hand side, and this is kind of your before shots. Again, you can see the ball position creeping back a little bit there. Okay, this was a wedge. Now, you might be somebody who moves the ball back and forth. Personally speaking, I tend to want to see kind of a constant ball position with your irons. And all that happens is this foot's going to get a bit further back as you get a longer club. So it gives the impression the ball's moved back in your stance rather than you moving it, kind of move it back this way. Because if you move it back yourself to your right side, you're moving the ball further around the arc. Now you're going to want it the golf ball kind of from this underneath position anyway, aren't you? You're encouraging more that underneath flick. And if we look at the, uh, this left-hand one here now as you go back, Left shoulder quite high, sort of head moving off the golf ball. Now as we start coming down, the back has been completed and your weight's back this way. Now as you start coming back in the golf ball, next break, there's impact, yeah? Ball's been hit. Look where your hands are. Yeah. That's adding a lot of loft to that golf club. Everything's behind the ball there now. I mean, your whole left side now is visible from the front on side. This was the shorter swing version, obviously. As we get to about here, obviously the left was going down a bit. Your head's not moving quite so far off the golf ball. As we start moving, there you go. There's a little bit of a movement there as that club is starting to complete the back swing. Yeah? Now, this is where the swing needs to start creating that bump. And then if you're making a bigger swing, the arms will almost be keep going around that sort of round the clock face. Yeah? So as you then start moving back into the golf ball now, yeah, the there's impact. I just clear all that and clear all that. Look at the difference in those two impact positions there now. At least your hands now are moving towards that left side. In an ideal world, it's going to take a bit of practice, obviously. We want to see kind of somewhere around there with your hands. So your hands are a little bit more in this sort of area, yeah? Certainly not back there with your right hand, yeah? Mm. Okay? Because this, for me now, once that club has gone past your hands, and if your hands are back by your right leg hitting the golf ball, that club has overtaken. You've done two things. You've added loft. And also now, by virtue of your hands being behind the golf ball, you're pushing the club to target. Okay, if your hands are in front, they're pulling the club through. Now, think about a kid's tr tonka toy, right? If you try and push it, <laughs> any little movement, that thing's off. So if I take my little fingers, I can just pull it. It can come really easy and stay nice and straight. So the more your hands stay in front of that club, the more face control you've got. The second that club overtakes your hands, <laughs> it's going to waft and wave all over the place. Yeah? And again, good golfer like yourself, obviously, you're able to deal with that for the most part. But as you said yourself, you find your short game now is, is in good shape and you're going scratch to four. We want the short game to be in good shape to make you shoot two to plus two or even lower, where the long game is supporting the short game, not the other way around with the short game supporting and helping the long game, yeah? So you're moving better. Launch angle, say, we're looking for is around that sort of 18, 19 for you, I would suggest. It's funny, though, because when I play on the course, I don't yeah. seem to hit it as high. Um, it's hard to see something on range because obviously the range balls have a different kind of spin rates and on the golf course you've got different perceptions, I suppose, or different slopes maybe. Some of them, you know, one way down, please, on the nine or ten. He hits the ball immensely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he's at 970 yards. Yeah, and if he's got club head speed, then the launch angle can be a little bit higher. So as the club head speed obviously changes, his launch angle could be still lower than yours, but it goes higher because the ball's obviously faster. So the peak of your flight could be higher, but the launch could be lower. I mean, if you look at on tour, right, and I only found that fairly, well, last two or three years ago, I was doing something with a track man, that the height of every golf club in the bag from wedge through to driver is the same height. About 30 yards, yeah? Every, every golf ball on tour goes about 100 foot, yeah? Some do get the ball a bit high, obviously, but the, the overall tour average, every club through the bag is about 100 foot. 30 yards, it's like 31, 30, 29, 28, 32, 31, through the bag from driver to wedge. Mm -hmm. They just launch at different angles to peak later on in the flight, yeah? Mm -hmm. They all get the same kind of top at the same position, yeah? So if this guy's hitting the ball high, he might be hitting the ball higher, but he could be launching it lower, okay, relative to you, and then to therefore getting the yardage, okay? If his club head speed's quite high, and obviously the ball's going to go a long way. But it's getting that in position, so your body has to be more onto that left side, but you need to get that feeling there, so that you're moving there earlier. Now, again, this is only short swings. When it's a short swing and speed is taken off, you're able to put that move in. This is, to me, probably the minimal amount you want to do. If we can get a little bit more, start moving into that wall, so to, so to speak, <coughs> we can get that sensation of getting more sort of compressed ball position, getting into that position there more so, as opposed to being head back here, arm back here, hands back there, and just... Flicking up in the air. You're a good player. You can hit it well, as you said. But 
as any golfer will tell you, a good golfer, you're never going to strike it good from there. Yeah. You get the sweet spot yeah. all day. That's fine. But it's just up in the air with too much flight. I mean, I don't, I, the thing is, when I play golf, I don't deviate much. You know, the, I don't know, the difference going to a golf course is that, because mm-hmm. I've got a target. Yeah, yeah. I can manoeuvre it. From yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, you know, I don't miss, I can, I can play well, yeah. 15 greens out of regulation. Yeah, and yeah, ones yeah. I have missed, they yeah. could be by yeah. an inch or two. Yeah. You know, um, it can be as, it can be as, it's, it's the driver for me, which is the, is the one thing that, um, if I hit that, that yeah. big hook, yeah, yeah. We'll have a couple yeah. of the driver angles just to finish off with some driver shots together. The yeah. fi- it's the same move with the drives. The ball's further forward, but we still want to be moving to that left side, yeah? So have a couple there with that side. I'm going to cut the drivers to finish off, all right?